Hello and welcome to Rays of Hope, brought to you by the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center. I'm your host for today, Mary Foley, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for today's program because we have some exciting things to tell you about, and you as a community member have an amazing opportunity to become involved in something greater than yourself. And so let's get right to our guest for today, Lori Brown, uh, the Director of Clinical Services for the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center, and Teresa Morris, a therapist. Welcome, both of you, to today's program. Thank you. Well, I tell you, we have alluded to our viewers uh, a project, um, an undertaking, lots of different things on previous programs, but today we're in a place to actually talk about something new and exciting coming to the purchase area, the first ever of its kind. Can you take just a moment, one of you, whichever one, I know you're both excited about this project, mm -hmm. and tell me what's coming to our area uh, with the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center? Who wants to take that? Well, we, we are very excited. I think this is one of the, the biggest things in the history of our center, and I really believe for the community itself. We are in the process of, of renovating and developing an expressive play and art therapy at our center. So will this be a separate building? So is this a separate, uh, not that it's a separate center that it's not under us, right. but this is something very different than what we've done before. So an expressive therapy center, mm -hmm. what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a separate building and the entire facility will be dedicated to expressive types of therapy. I see. Um, we will have every, uh, just a range of, of activities included in that. Everything from sand tray therapy to art, you know, and painting, drawing, clay, you know, all those types of mediums, as well as a yoga and meditation room. Okay, and um, so I, I've, um, that's your area. The yoga and relaxation is something that you're very passionate about. And Teresa, I want to bring you into the conversation on that, but before we get there, mm -hmm. when, when the viewer hears expressive therapy, um, you've given us an idea of some of the activities. Mm -hmm. Teresa, why is expressive therapy, or how rather, is expressive therapy different than talk therapy that people might uh, have an idea of? What is expressive therapy? Expressive therapy is different from talk therapy in that it provides ways that a client or victim can um, express themselves other than verbalizing what, what they have to say because sometimes there are not the words there for what they are feeling, what they are experiencing. I see. I see. I think when you really look at the nature of what the clients we serve have been through, they've been through very traumatic, painful experiences. And so just talking about that pain is difficult to do. Talking about those memories and feelings mm -hmm. and thoughts that are related mm -hmm. to what they've been through is difficult. I also think because of the nature of what they've been through, mm -hmm. they have either been told or feel like it's not something they can talk about. I see. So I think that's an important aspect. And I also think that you know it's important to, to understand that when you go through trauma, it affects your actually it affects your, your what's going on in your brain and how mm -hmm. things are stored and, and how those things are connected. And there's lots of new research that actually shows that when someone goes through something traumatic that it really does affect the areas of the brain that are related to language. And so there really are those times where it, it, it's painful and it's difficult and they feel like they can't talk about mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but even more than that, where they really can't. I, I have had clients who say to me, I can't talk about it, there's, there, the words just aren't there. And, and so I believe that that's this, true. apparently, mm -hmm. from what you're saying, mm -hmm. gives that individual mm -hmm. another way, another mm -hmm. tool, another medium mm -hmm. to try to put words with, with what has happened to them. And so I'm, I'm hearing you say that after expressing it through different, different avenues, that then maybe they're able to label the word and then, and then put it together for themselves. Absolutely, right. and right. I, I think it helps them to be able to bring things together. When you go through something traumatic as a way of surviving that experience, mm -hmm. we break things, take things apart, separate things to try to make them manageable. And I think sometimes you need more than just an opportunity to talk about that. And when mm -hmm. you're doing expressive kinds of things, I also think it allows an opportunity to really connect those thoughts and those feelings and those memories together mm -hmm. through something that you can see, through something that you're producing, through that process. Okay. It brings a visualization to mm -hmm. what they are, what they are feeling, what they really can't say. It gives, mm -hmm. it gives um, mm -hmm. the client and a way to, to see what they are experiencing. I see. Mm -hmm. So it would, I think it would be helpful for you as the therapist to see, but also powerful for the individual doing the exercise to understand perhaps mm -hmm. what is going on inside of them that they cannot find the words to express. Because right. I think in our society, 
uh, we want you just to say it and get it out and, and that's it. And sometimes that's difficult and I can't imagine the frustration they must encounter. So the viewer, I guess, I hope now has a better understanding of what expressive therapy is when we, when we label it the expressive therapy center. We know why um, that it's necessary. Tell me, uh, either one of you, both of you, tell me what types of activities, you, you, you made a list at the beginning, but what types of activities will people be engaged in? Mm -hmm. We have the sand tray therapy where we um, will have a room with a couple of different sand trays, but with different figurines. And Are you talking about a sandbox? Mm -hmm, a sandbox. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, to use the, the figures to really express what they're, what they're experiencing, and they create kind of a world or a picture mm -hmm. of, of what it is that they're experiencing with these figures. In that it's such a powerful process. Mm -hmm. it, it really mm -hmm. can be very powerful. We also have art, um, you know, painting, uh, clay, different mm -hmm. different modes to to express mm -hmm. the way they're feeling too. And we're really hoping to, that this will also be an opportunity for people from the community to get involved. For example, with the art, you know, to, to have local artists to get involved and to be able to come in and do classes and trainings and workshops to show mm -hmm. clients different types of mediums and things like that that they could that that might be there that they never knew were there. You know, that they could utilize mm -hmm. in this process. So it seems like this mm -hmm. center is going to engage the senses more than just talking about something they're going to touch and feel and be an active part of their mm -hmm. own recovery. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the, the therapy part, I think we have a better understanding as much as I think the average person that maybe hasn't been in a center like this can have. Mm -hmm. Tell me though, why is the yoga and relaxation um, an important part of trauma work? Yoga and meditation is such an important part of trauma work because uh, there's a high level of anxiety mm -hmm. that goes along with the, the reactions that people experience. And what relaxation, yoga, and meditation does is really teaches um, individuals to um, relax and to cope with what they are experiencing, their anxiety that they're experiencing. Um, yoga also uh, do, gets I, you to know your body I and uh, to, to really increase your self-awareness of what's going on inside. And that's what we also try to do in trauma work is really trying to understand what is going on inside of your mind and your body mm. and connect the two. Well, Teresa, it, you know, that makes perfect sense. And I don't know that I would have ever made that connection between maybe the fact that someone that has been traumatized sexually would want to detach from their body and the things that they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so not only would the client have the opportunity to just have a reduction in the symptoms of anxiety, but then almost without knowing it, they are furthering their own recovery process mm -hmm. through yoga and relaxation. Mm -hmm. um, what have you all found um, have you found immediate results when people do practice these techniques or does it take a while? I think individuals vary. I think there are some people maybe right off the bat it feels comfortable and other people it may take a little bit more time mm -hmm. and a little bit more work, but I think it's always beneficial. I think learning to breathe mm -hmm. and learning to relax and control and be in touch with and know your body is so important. Mm -hmm. And in being able to do that, they learn to manage that physiological anxiety and those reactions. That, mm -hmm. that come apart, come about as a result of trauma, um, and they're also empowered. I think you know when when they're able to get control. Um, the process of trauma is such an out of control thing, mm -hmm. and it makes them feel so out of control that I think this is really a necessary part. So mm -hmm. now, will these classes be available to clients of this center free of charge? Yes, yes. As with all of our services, uh, this will something that we will we will not be um, asking for a fee for. Uh, okay. We'll be offering classes um, as early as March and April for our clients. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And so now if I'm a viewer and, and maybe I am uh, active in yoga or I understand a little bit about what you're talking about, I might be concerned that, uh, that the person wouldn't be trained in yoga. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to people that maybe would have that concern that this is a therapy center, so are you qualified to do yoga training? Um, I am getting ready to go through the certification process, the yoga teacher training. I have also been talking with a group of individuals in Massachusetts who have uh, designed a yoga protocol for trauma victims. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, maybe going there in early spring to to attend that training as well. Mm -hmm. I think people are realizing more and more that this is really something that's very helpful 
and beneficial for trauma survivors. So, Lori, as the director of the clinical program, um, I always think it's important that people know that not only is the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center available to victims of trauma and their families, not only is it free and confidential, mm -hmm. but that it really, uh, that the staff really is trained to do what it is that they do. Would you address that for the mm -hmm. viewer? Um, what makes this team, this center, mm -hmm. more qualified to treat sexual trauma than perhaps somewhere else? Oh, absolutely. Well, the, our therapists are, of course, all licensed therapists. We all have um, quite a bit of experience in working with trauma as well as training. Mm -hmm. We've worked really hard over the last few years what, to find what I think is the best training and education in the field of trauma mm -hmm. and work to find the protocols that are most effective mm -hmm. and, the, and the most effective techniques in working with, with trauma, which is what led us to expressive therapy. I see. So mm -hmm. it was really the, the knowledge preceded the project. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, uh, both of you, it sounds like, recognize recognized the more you were trained and the more you have studied that there needs to be alter alternative methods right. to dealing with trauma so that led to this vision of the expressive therapy center um, I think we need to let the viewers know that it was the honorable order of the Kentucky colonels that helped us make this possible as well as local donations so a grant through them uh, and a match grant within the center have helped us to make this a reality but uh, in, the, in the second segment, we're going to be talking with uh, volunteers who are behind what we do, and they're going to be challenging our viewer to become involved in whatever capacity that they are able. But if folks are listening and they think, you know what, now this sounds like something that I want to be a part of mm -hmm. because I love art or I love yoga, I like those expressive methods, mm -hmm. um, how can they be a part? Well, actually, one, in, in looking for different activities and types of mm -hmm. art and, and things to get clients involved in, we came across the idea of clay and, and tiles and, and you know, different art projects. And in doing that, we've come up with, I think, a way that people could get involved and help sponsor mm -hmm. um, someone's therapy. And, and contribute to the, the building of this expressive mm -hmm. therapy center. Mm -hmm. um, we are putting together mosaic works of art on mm -hmm. the walls throughout the expressive therapy center mm -hmm. and using these tiles to do that. And these are tiles that clients as well as staff and volunteers who work with trauma survivors are have created and are in the process of creating that will that will be there I think as an inspirational um, you know, to, to, to inspire, you know, mm -hmm. the people who come into the center. It mm -hmm. takes a lot, of, a lot of courage, you know, to come in and ask for help when you've been through and you, this, this type of trauma and mm -hmm. you've been hurt in this way. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, what I'm hoping is that when people come into the center and see these tiles and this work of art, that they're going to be inspired and encouraged and, and feel supported. And we have had an overwhelming response from the community so far. So it's so quickly before we mm -hmm. go, take a break, there is a way for, for businesses and mm -hmm. church groups and individuals mm -hmm. to purchase a tile right. that will benefit the center. Those messages, they can determine what goes on the mm -hmm. tile. A client mm -hmm. will paint them. So in a sense, it's sponsoring a client's recovery. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what it must be like when a client walks in and sees that the business and the community is behind their recovery. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you so much for being here. We're going to go to a quick break. We're going to be back to talk to some volunteers, um, and we're very excited about, about what's going on. And we will be right back. Welcome back to Rays of Hope, brought to you by the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center. I'm your host, Mary Foley, and I'm so glad uh, that if you're joining us for the second half that you have joined us, and those of you that have stayed with us, we have some more exciting news to bring you. We're talking today about the Expressive Therapy Center that's going to be a part of the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center. It's the first ever of its kind in the Purchase Area, and so that makes 
uh, this community very fortunate and we want to tell you how you can be a part of this amazing opportunity. And for this segment, we have some new faces with us. We have Kelly McNutt and we have Tony Melton. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks. So glad to have both of you. You all bring a very different perspective. We have just, um, for, for the viewers that have been with us, they know that we've been talking to some therapists of the center. For those just now joining us, um, those therapists have taken some time to just explain what the center is and why it's important. You're here to tell the viewer why you have made this something that you're passionate about and something that you're a part of. So I'm going to start with you, Kelly. You okay. have volunteered for the center in lots of capacities, but um, I don't know that I have seen a, a passion and excitement uh, until I met Tony uh, <laughs> that, is, that is, is, is much like yours. Why is the center important to you? The reason that the center is important to me boils down to the fact that I believe in the mission of PASAC. Uh, their mission is to promote and support the healing of anyone affected by sexual violence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge to find an organization that you believe in the mission of. And I totally support the mission of the Purchase Area mm -hmm. Sexual Assault Center. It's a mouthful to say. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Well said. And Tony, you have just come on board in terms of, of just being involved with the mm -hmm. center. Uh, we actually uh, had you help us with a, with a fundraiser we did last year. Mm -hmm. And I knew instantly that some Something was sparked in you, um, and you've been with us ever since. Can you tell the viewer why is this important to you? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. It, it happened, and it did happen all of a sudden. It was it was like that um, when we were at the Men Who Cook. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were just beginning to talk about this Expressive Art Therapy Center. There was some art that some teens and children mm -hmm. had done that had been at the center, mm -hmm. and when I looked at that artwork and I read the words of those children and teenagers that had been affected by sexual assault, that had been abused, um, it, it just struck something in me. I have mm -hmm. two children of my own. I have my own experiences with this kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, violence and assault, and I, um, it, it, it really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so grateful that the center was there. I'm fairly new to the community, to mm -hmm. the purchase area. I've only been here for a few years and I wasn't aware of what was going on and I knew that that was the problem that I wanted to help fix. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that people knew that it was here because when you're faced with something that traumatic, mm -hmm. that feeling of being lost is so overwhelming mm -hmm. and at least to know or to have a friend know or to have a, a co-worker know, to have someone in your life know mm -hmm. that there is a place that offers hope. I wanted to make sure that that happened. So you all are, are involved for, for different reasons on different levels, but the passion that you bring is something that I hope is contagious to the viewer today. Um, and just so that we go ahead and create the scope of the problem, and I think what you're referring to, um, I want to let folks know that the, in the last fiscal year, the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center served 981 victims mm -hmm. of sexual crime. Over 400 of those were children, mm -hmm. and I think that's some of the artwork that you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. So we have this Expressive Therapy Center. Um, it is something that has never been in the purchase area before. Right. Um, it is backed by research and scientifically based treatment approaches, so it, we hope, obviously, we expect that it will be a successful uh, endeavor that, we'll, that we will have. Right. But let me ask both of you, and you can go whichever way you, which way, way you <laughs> want to go, um, how do you think that folks should be involved? Um, once, if, they, if they're like you, Tony, and they mm -hmm. see this program and they say, wow, that's something that I want to do, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? What do they need to do? I, I think one of the, the easiest ways to get involved if you don't want to go out and talk on television <laughs> or if you if you <laughs> don't have a whole lot of time in your schedule um, to contribute financially is obviously the easiest way mm -hmm. to have a huge impact. But I think one of the other things that PASAC offers that's very important is the education and prevention programs. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a civic organization, a church group, maybe even with your coworkers, uh, to set up a time to where you can educate as many people as possible mm -hmm. um, on what is offered and what's available. I think that's probably the two things that I would advise people to do that uh, doesn't take a huge investment. Sure. I, um, have one of those personalities when I find something and I <laughs> grab onto it. I want to get in it 
as many ways as possible, but uh, not everybody has that flexibility in mm -hmm. their lives. So mm -hmm. I think those would be the two ways that I would recommend that somebody get involved. Okay, and we're certainly glad you got involved with us. <laughs> and Kelly, you bring um, sort of that business uh, part to it. In other words, you, you work in business and you're out in the right. community and, and um, and I'm sure that you both are. I know for you specifically, right. that is something that, that you do. Why do you think businesses, uh, business leaders, um, people that are in that realm should consider uh, this project as something to be a part of in whatever way they are capable? Right. I think for businesses, it's very important to be involved in your community. Being such a small community that we do have, um, the way to build that sense of community is to get involved in different organizations around the community um, with the with the pay sack and with this expressive art therapy center just by purchasing one tile a hundred dollars a tile that's a great way to even promote your business through the center mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when those victims come in you know like you said earlier it's so important for them to see who supports them mm -hmm. and knowing that a small community you know, the small business in a community mm -hmm. is involved, I think would speak volumes to those victims. So, you have said you're new to the area. I You've am. been here in, in different capacities right. for a while. How do you think that the Expressive Art Therapy Center will help to create a stronger, safer community from your personal perspective, for your family and for yourself? I know that I, I've taken my eldest daughter, who's 11, uh, she'll be 12 next month, <laughs> 21 in her mind. <laughs> but uh, sh I've taken her to the center. She has seen the, the building. She knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, it was very comforting for me to, to see her comprehending, to taking it all in, to what it's all about. And, and uh, some of the, the pictures that were up there, they really affected her as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it's very empowering to anyone, male or female, to know that there are other people supporting them. Right. And mm -hmm. I think, especially with the tiles, I, I think it's, it's a way really for the individual mm -hmm. to be a part of something that is everlasting, mm -hmm. to, to offer your little bit of hope that will be there forever for every person that's touched by this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that'll be a part of, of making those numbers much lower mm -hmm. for however sure. many people are, are unfortunate, unfortunately touched by this. But I, I think it's, it's just such an amazing way to bring us all together, mm -hmm. that we're on the same page, mm -hmm. that there is hope, there is a way that we can help educate people and prevent this. And like Kelly was saying, help folks heal that have already been through it. I, and I agree. Uh, I think that the, the unique part about the center in general is I think uh, what I hope is conveyed today is we hope that folks don't have to receive mm -hmm. our services, right. but the statistics say that they, someone that they know at least will. And so it's just a way for them to just be a part, to contribute, sort of pay it forward, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, Kelly, for you, yeah. um, personally, how do you think this center will strengthen the community? Um, I think the Art Therapy Center is a great way for people to talk about what has happened to them or mm -hmm. express what has happened to them. I think there's a huge stigma with counseling mm -hmm. and um, not everybody has the ability to just talk about mm -hmm. their, their problems or mm -hmm. the issues that have affected them. And I think this is a way that it's not saying you have to tell me what happened, but you know, express your feelings mm -hmm. and it takes that stigma away. Mm -hmm. So even though you don't, <laughs> you don't want people to need your services, I think it will provide an outlet for people to safely tell what Absolutely. has happened to them. Absolutely. I think this is such a great opportunity to get that discussion started. If you were going to your employees, your coworkers, your clients, your friends, your church members, if you're going to them and saying, look, let's be a part of this, mm -hmm. and someone doesn't know, one of the biggest frustrations for me in talking about PASAC and the Expressive Art Therapy is to, to run across people that just don't believe that it's an issue. Right. They so just don't think that it's a problem. They don't think it's that big of a problem. And I think this is a great opportunity for, for dads and sons and, and mothers and daughters and sisters and everyone to sit down and go, okay, this is a reality. Right. It's, def it's touched every family. It's touched every office. There is someone there. And it really is. It's such a great opportunity to get that conversation started. Well, and I think you have hit on an excellent point that I certainly think fits with what we're talking about today. And that is when you volunteer 
for the center, you are acknowledging that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And for those that are listening that really may not um, be ready to buy into that for whatever reason, um, I, I want to go ahead and, and take this opportunity to say that the state of Kentucky uh, served 5,575 victims of sexual crime this past year. So on the western end of the state, we don't quite have a fifth, but we're close. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we have, I, I think, a worse problem. I think the the beauty of what we're doing here today is people are coming forward mm -hmm. and they are getting help. Right. And we are almost out of time, um, but I'd like to give both of you the, the final say. Um, if you could tell the viewer one thing about PASAC and why you're passionate about what we do and how you hope they will become a part of what we do, what would you say? I think I would encourage anybody to look in the eyes of their children, to look in their eyes of their sisters and brothers and to stop and think how it would affect them mm -hmm. if it were someone that they love. And, it, and just to, to take that passion, that compassion that you would have mm -hmm. and, and put that in to PASAC, however you see fit. Okay, thank you, Tony. Kelly, for you the same, what would you say to viewers about why uh, they should consider being a part well, I, I consider myself an optimist and I truly believe that everybody wants to be involved. And I think sometimes it's hard for people to choose an organization that they see that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. And everybody can relate to sexual assault. It's happened, as mm -hmm. you said, happened to somebody you know, a coworker or a friend. So this is an organization that men and women and children of all ages can get involved in. And I just charge everyone to become a member, to purchase a tile, to get your name on this wall to provide a ray of hope for a victim that otherwise they might not realize your support for such a wonderful cause. Well, thank you both for being here, uh, for being a part of what we do, uh, for taking your time today just to, just to share your heart with me and with the viewers. Thank you so much. Well, thanks. And thank you for being here, for giving us a portion of your time to hear about what we're doing at the Purchase Area Sexual Assault Center. As we leave today, I would like to just make sure you have our contact information should you need it or should you know someone that could benefit from our services. 1-800-928-7273 is a crisis line open 24 hours a day to serve you. You can visit us on the web at www.pasacky.org or locally at 534-4422. We'll see you next time.